I love sports and horses. I have played baseball, basketball, and chess. And thanks to that, I'm being able to develop certain skills or strategics that have not only helped me win games, but also serve me well in life. For example, it may seem difficult to win a chess game, but with a little common sense, it's checkmate in a few moves. Studying medicine was my childhood dream, but it's one thing to dream about it, and another thing is to accomplish it. As the saying goes, it is a horse of a different color. Going to college meant embarking on a long uphill journey, but like all journeys, this one began with a simple step. In 1973, at the age of 17, I earned my high school diploma from La Salle in Santiago and moved to Santo Domingo to study medicine at the Universidad Nacional Pedro Enrique Sureña, UNF. My parents and my uncle, the pediatrician, helped me to pay for my tuition while I worked to pay my living expenses. They only had to pay for one year. My first job was at the sugarcane fields. Each Saturday, I was responsible for paying the waves of the day workers who were primarily Haitian. I too received an envelope with my name on it and my salary inside. We often had to work at jobs that had little or nothing to do with the career we are studying for, but they always offer us experiences that prove valuable later on in life as they show us the reality of things, and reality is the best teacher. The reality of the Dominican Republic, like that of other Latin American countries, is marked by inequalities, constant political and economic crisis, or rampant corruption. When you are a college student, in order to cross the finish line, you have to learn how to keep going without losing sight of your goal just like the horses at the racetrack. But at the same time, you have to remain open and sensitive to the great cause of social justice and the signs of the times in which you live. University life was very demanding. I spent countless sleepless nights studying, often by gas lamp or candlelight, and during the intense Caribbean heat. As a result, I got away manna cum laude when I was barely 23 years old. I was finally ready to practice medicine. In 1986, President Joaquin Balaguer began his third term. In contrast to the previous administration, this one was more liberal. By then, Balaguer was 80 years old and nearly blind. He had decided to surround himself with new leaders, young people who were free from corruption and committed to turning the public administration around. I was 30 years old, with no political experience and no thirst for power. Nevertheless, I was called to serve as a deputy minister of public health. Assuming that role was a challenge. It was a complicated game that I didn't know how to win but I had to take the first step. The first thing I discovered was public pharmacy with storage room full of expired medications and very poor quality medicine. We reported the situation to the media, and within a week, we managed to get the providers to remove the effective medications and return the checks. We also opened licitations in order to acquire medications at much lower prices and break up the monopolies. The public pharmacies were a good initiative, but they need to function properly. In the end, we left 400 public pharmacies in places throughout the country. From that moment on, many things happened, and we got back in the game. We felt like we were getting somewhere, but then, a severe crisis occurred at Jose Maria Cabral Ibaez Hospital in Santiago de los Caballeros. The whole staff threatened to quit because supposedly there was no operating budget. 
The nurses were saying that there was no medicine on the night shift, that the dinner was too cold, that the bathroom smelled bad, and the floors were very dirty. And that was with the hospital full of patients. No one could even get into the emergency room. And the doctors said that there were no guns, equipment, or anything else during the afternoon and evening to take care of the patients. The hospital administrator quit. I was wondering, what will happen to the patients? They could die? Did he not care? What could we do? I asked them to appoint me as the interim administrator of that hospital because I knew that in order to overcome chaos of that magnitude, I would have to make decisions on the spot. The first thing I did was to talk to the janitorial staff. I divided the building up by square meters for which each person was responsible by name. I discovered that the reason that the food was cold at night was that they only turned on the stoves in the morning and they didn't cook after that. I ordered them to turn them one hour less in the morning and two hours more in the evening. When the nurses gathered up the used surgical supplies that were reusable, I ordered them to turn on the boilers to sanitize the materials so they could use again that night. They also complained that there was no medicine on the floors, but that was impossible. The storage rooms and the pharmacy were full. I called the staff. There were 15 of them plus the manager. They told me that they couldn't leave the premises open at night because someone might steal the medication. I say, okay, starting today, each one of you is going to work the night, but twice a month. And during the 31 days month, you, the manager, will be on call. They protested, but in the end, they did it. It was common sense. The next day, the emergency room was clean, and the doctor had supplied to work with all day long. The dinner was hot, and there was medicine available on all of the floors what it was previously missing. On top of all of that, the whole building looked clean. Within a week, everything had been resolved. Believe it or not, upon returning to Santo Domingo, what did I find out? Everything that had happened at the hospital was because a military officer who was close to the president wanted to pressure him to increase the budget. How much money did we spend to resolve this crisis? No one penny. And again, checkmate. We won the game. My friends, we can replicate this in every area of our lives, especially how we get through our times of crisis. Where did I learn it? Perhaps a little bit from playing chess. Maybe that taught me to be strategic and to make the right move in the right time. But mostly, I learned it at home, watching my father and my uncle work with discipline and integrity. Honest people, who want to do things well are the ones that feel inspired by their leaders. All of us can be someone leader, and all of us can follow our leaders. And sometimes it's as simple as a few moves and checkmate.